Barry Gibb, it's infectious. You know, I'm just sitting here in my chair and I can't stop bopping. It was, you know, iconic at the time. When, when, when you were asked to do that, how, how did it even come about? I mean, you weren't necessarily known as a disco group, were you? No. Well, uh, Armored Ertick and Atlantic Records uh, told us that they were going to drop the group if we couldn't kick it up. And I think that's the turn of phrase I, I remember hearing. And uh, we had to reinvent ourselves. You know, we were going through about two or three years of uh, what I call the rock wilderness. And we had to come up with another way. And, uh, and I've seen other artists do that. The Beatles did it with every album. So you can't just be, you can't just be playing a certain kind of music. You've got to look the part. And you've got to, every album cover should be different. And you should look different. So we took that lesson, you know. And, you know, uh, some of those songs for Fever were taken from previous albums like Children of the World and things like that. So it just became out of control and as everything does when it's successful. And we just got, we were lucky that it didn't end as, as, as quick as it might have. It just went on and on for years and it was a wonderful experience and very surreal, very surreal. I mean, it is extraordinary and it's still cemented in, in people's consciousness. I mean, it's still, it never gets old, that, that particularly that, um, well, that song. But Staying Alive was not about dancing. I mean, there was not a single lyric that said the word dance in that. It was about something completely no. different, wasn't it? Yes, yes. It was about life and about New York and, and how that affected everybody else. And, and, the, sto the, film and the, the story in the film is about a family in New York who wanted to go dancing. And it was actually called Tribal Rights of a New Saturday Night. That was the headline in a newspaper. And Robert was looking for a title for the film. And the suggestion was, was uh, Night Fever. And he thought that was a little too um, sexually oriented. So th uh, <laughs> that he rejected that. And then later we found out it was Saturday Night Fever. So, you know, go figure. You never really know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were in Herreville, outside Paris. Uh, mixing a live album called Here At Last. And Robert called and said, we need about five or six songs for this film. We didn't even know it was a compilation album. So mm. we, we finished mixing the album and we started recording, the, writing these songs and recording them. But once again, you can't predict what's gonna happen. The same with this album, uh, um, uh, Greenfields, you can't predict it. I haven't seen the documentary. Um, I've, I've seen the very early stages of the first cut part of and I, I just can't watch my family disappear it's, it's just it's just not it's, it's just not something I can deal with 